Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, I want to talk about the truth about learning to code, especially when you're looking to switch careers late in life. There's a lot of information online, but a lot of times you see these videos that promise you in three months, six months, you're going to get a job making over 100K. And that's where the problem arises, is that there's plenty of hype and it's very easy to get excited about something and not realize the actual work and the difficulties that come with learning to program or becoming a web developer so in this video i just want to share my experience and hopefully it'll help you guys to make a decision if this is something you should pursue or not by the way my name is paul and on this channel i talk about switching careers into web development late in life so if this is something you're interested in consider subscribing All right, guys, here's the deal. Anything in life that is worth doing requires a lot of work and programming or learning to code is no different. Web development is a very difficult field to get into. Don't let others fool you and tell you this idea that in three to six months, you could be making $100,000. In three to six months, you might be able to get by and get an entry level job, but it will be very difficult. The only caveat I would tell you is that maybe if you go to a boot camp and they have good job placement services, they might be able to get you in. And at your first job, you'll be able to learn the skills that are required to allow you to grow as a junior web developer. But in most cases, after three to six months of self-study, it is going to be very difficult. Why? Because not only do you have to learn a lot, you also have to have a portfolio that is able to rival other candidates that may have gone to universities for computer science degrees. You have to understand when you apply to jobs, you're not just competing with other self-taught developers. No, not at all. You're competing against other college grads who might be younger than you who might have a portfolio who might graduate from a great school with a computer science degree and here you are self-taught nothing to show it's like if I show up empty-handed and I have nothing and I'll try to convince you that I'm able to do something you won't take my word for it you will want proof and getting hired as a web developer as a self-taught web developer or a bootcamp grad developer you have to prove those things and that's where the difficulty arises we believe in these promises we believe in the hype that we feel that just because we learn something all of a sudden that's the that our work is done and we'll be able to get a job not a problem so if you're looking to switch careers to web development or maybe you're learning web development i'm not saying you should stop but i'm saying take a really good look and ask yourself what are the reasons why you're doing this if you're just doing it for the money, I could see how this could be a very enticing proposition. But for me, I feel it's a very difficult thing to do if you're just thinking about the money. Because getting into web development and programming, you're basically committing to lifelong study that will never end in your whole career. You will be studying all the time, not at work, but also when you come home, you're going to spend an hour to two hours of your own free time learning new things that help you to get better at what you do at your job. So if you're not willing to put in the work to learn new things, this is not the career for you. It is a very difficult career. When I started on this journey of learning web development, I've never had a moment where I'm like, oh, that's it, I got it. No, there's constant learning every day. And so when you jump into this career, you have to understand that don't try to fool yourself because you will be learning 80% of your time at work, at home, you have to do it to stay relevant in this career. I personally do this because I love it, I enjoy it. And by the way, because I do enjoy what I do, I don't mind sitting in front of the computer here and banging my head against the keyboard because I'm frustrated because things don't work. Another reason that I want to say that this is a difficult decision is because when you first starting out, especially if you're self-taught, you might not have directions of what to learn. And because there's so much information online, you might meander through all this material, learning things that don't even fit together and you'll spend a year to two years maybe, definitely more than three months, of trying to figure out what you should learn in the first place. So not having a good direction 
by being a self-taught developer will make you waste time and that's something that happened to me it was not until my good friend told me hey listen just pick one thing what i want you to do is pick react and get really good at react to a point where you're able to get a job don't worry about anything else because before then i was studying php python c sharp c plus plus and you know what i knew a little about a lot which is not something that's gonna get a job. So when you're starting out, you have to make sure you have a direction that you could follow and go. And as a self-taught developer, that is the hardest thing to do. Where do you go to find a path, to find a direction where you know the things that you're studying are going to help you get a job. When it comes to web development, what I did is I actually went on and I looked up a bunch of boot camps and college curriculum and saw what were the things that we're learning. And I created my own path, my own curriculum that I would follow. And because I knew that I was learning React.js, it was pretty easy for me. I just looked up a bunch of boot camps then I also search my listings in my local area of what they were hiring for React developers. So that you needed to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, React, and Redux. And I was like, you know what? That's what I'm going to commit learning. And that's what I did. So that's a great tip for you guys. Now, that's the benefit, by the way, of going to university or a boot camp is that they do have a curriculum for you. So that's something you don't have to think about. Another great place, you could look at Free Code Camp. I think the way they outline their learning path covers pretty much a lot of the things that you need to know. But um, the point being is that you do need to have a path that you're going to follow. Another reason why it is difficult is because when you're on your own learning, when you get stuck, when you find issues it's on you to find those solutions you have to go on google you have to go on stack overflow and you have to really experiment and do the things so if you're not in a boot camp or you're not in school and a self-taught developer you have to create or find your own community where you could ask people questions i've been really lucky that i have friends who are developers and when i do get stuck i ask them now let's say you don't have friends who are developers and you get stuck to be honest don't be shy and ask your questions on Stack Overflow. There's no such a thing as a silly question. Also reach out to people like me on YouTube or other people that you follow that you could ask questions to help you stay on path. It's very important that you guys have some sort of mechanism where your questions could be answered. And if you don't have that, that is one of the main reasons it is hard to be a self-taught developer because you're doing everything through trial and error. And the issue with doing everything through trial and error, you waste a lot of time. So as you could see, see just based on some of the things I said this idea of becoming a web developer in three months or six months it's a very tall ask and it will take you longer than that because not only do you have to learn what you're doing you also have to create a portfolio that rivals a portfolio of someone with a computer science degree would have because you have to stand out you have to be able to show potential employers that you're able to do the work and if you don't have a portfolio if you don't have your code on GitHub, if you don't have other ways that show your expertise, like one of the things I started to do, and I'll show you later um, in another video, I actually started a blog. So my idea is you should always be building cornerstone projects, but sometimes you might build a small thing that might not fit in your portfolio because nobody wants to see like a small app, like a tic-tac-toe game or a little weather widget because you know it's not big enough for a portfolio piece because it doesn't really solve a problem you know you need to have like a pretty good application that you created for your portfolio but for those little projects a good place is to have a blog where you could be like hey this is where i learned about css animations and here's a cool animation i did and you write it in a blog and you post it and that's something you could share on LinkedIn and that will start to show that you're committed to learning your craft, you're involved in the community by posting posts about programming and if you're looking to break into the field and kind of build your own authority, having a blog is a good way of doing it. A lot of people say well that's too much work. Well if you're starting late in life and you wanting to switch careers you need to put in that extra work. You need to do as much as you can to show potential employers or recruiters that you know what you're doing. And if you have a blog where you teach others or you talk about what you learn 
and you have the code examples, you also have a good portfolio and you have a good LinkedIn profile, then people will take you more seriously. And I'll talk more on that later. So I don't want to make this video too long as I'm always fond of making videos long uh, just because I love to talk. But I just wanted to share some of these ideas of why learning web development is difficult and why having an expectation that you're going to learn something in three months is not only unrealistic, it's also detrimental to you because if in three months you don't hit your goal, you're going to be so frustrated, you're going to want to quit. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I love creating these videos for you and kind of share my honest opinion of what things are. As you could see on this channel, I have nothing to sell except my, you know, talk about my experience and the difficulties I have. I don't benefit from you guys watching my videos. Don't get me wrong, one day I would love to make some courses that will bring you value, but I will never say that by following my course, you're gonna get a job in three months because I would hate to mislead you and get your hopes up just to have you guys get frustrated and fail. Anyway, I really appreciate all you guys who watched my videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time.